Open the meeting for the Zoning Board of Appeals, February 13th, 2020, 7 o'clock. Uh, this meeting is going to be videotaped. Call the meeting to order. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go over the meeting format. Did I come up with some ideas on how we're going to run this? The meeting will be open to the uh, people that are asking for the Variances. Special permits also. Yeah, or special permits also. Um, I first asked to read the appeal. Uh, we go over the speakers, questions from board members, comments from abutters, questions from board members, and comments from town members. Town members who are asking questions, please give your name and address. And if we're all satisfied, we close the meeting to discussion, and the board will discuss and decide what we're going to do on the appeals or variances. Variances. That's what you're looking for? Yeah, I guess that's it. Okay. Um, anyone have any questions, comments by board members? Sounds good. Do I have a second? Of course. Is that a vote? Need a motion on that? I think you do. So moved. So moved. Okay. We're going to take a vote on it, though. We're going to have a motion. Go ahead, Mr. Decker. No, you do. Motion, you oh, motion um, to accept these. You get to, it, did you get the second, Bernie? Second. I thought you seconded it. I tried. Oh, I think I'm you sorry. said there wasn't a motion second. already. Second. Second. Uh, what vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, one other thing, I'm going to ask that. Uh, during this meeting, please be respectful. There should be no interruption of others on the floor. This includes verbal outbursts, cheering, clapping. This applies to the public and board members alike. Okay, we've got uh, the first person on our agenda is the Eversource person. Okay, I'm recusing myself from this particular matter. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Dorothy Rona. I'm a telecommunications engineer out of Berlin, Connecticut for the corporate office of Eversource. And I'm here representing the application to add an antenna to the Pocumtuck Tower on Pine Nook Road, Old Pine Nook Road. Good evening. Good evening. Thank Welcome you. back. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I think it was just uh, what we just had to figure out. Uh, they had to change some paperwork and get it signed. Correct. And all that. Was the application now signed? I believe it was. I called in at some point, and the secretary uh, or the clerk said that the chairman of the select board was in, and she would have him sign that day. So. Oh yeah, but it wasn't signed. Be it wasn't signed. It wasn't the signed the last time I was here. Yeah, right. That was the stumbling block. Right. We don't have it with us, do we? Do we have well, it? No you one provided it for me, but they gave you the folder here. See it? I didn't see it in here. Well, I understand it's signed because. So, somebody told me that Carolyn signed it. Okay. You want me to look through it? Yeah. Right. Right. I didn't see it. That's this is all for that other one. This is all. Uh, this is the other one. I didn't see it in here. I looked. Well, Casey's here. I don't know where the, but got to stuff it. This is all Smith and Associates. Yeah, I didn't see it in here. There's Smith and something on this folder. How about this one here? Oh, okay, hang on. This is maybe this is it. Zoning board. Let's see it. Let me see the board. Building commissioner. So, believe they signed this one. I don't. I don't see signatures of the uh, assessor. I mean the. Uh, That's a request for comment. But over here, the application is here, right? The property owner's name. Not that I know of. You want me to go ask? Yeah, go ask. Can ask yeah, you can ask Diana there. or Casey. Trevor Sinan, he's there. <sighs> Another thing to put on my list of things I need to do. Yeah, the 
nice ride up from Berlin? I live in West Springfield. Oh. It's a long drive every day. <laughs> I spent many hours in that building years ago. You did? Oh, yes. Probably close to 40 years ago. The people who were there had either retired or dead <laughs> when I was there. I bet there's one of them working in my group still. Oh, yeah? <laughs> He's been there for 48, going on 48 years. Two, two of them, two of the guys, 47 and 48 years. Uh, I was, this work down there probably 1970. Yeah? Somewhere in there. In generation, the generation. Excuse area. me? What area? Oh, I can't really discuss it. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but anyway, nice people. Yeah. About a long ride. Yes, indeed. From here down. <laughs> we normally don't check on this stuff when you're in there, do we? Long ride. Because you don't work for but this. I'm pretty sure the people that I dealt with are long since retired. I got you. But if you would like me to, I can. Well, I got an open here from now on, then I got to check on this because I, I asked them to have it done. Well, I was told it was oh, yeah, done. Yeah, no, I understand. Well, uh, two people saying something is better than one, right? She is. Signed as the <coughs> representing person. She's making a copy for her records and she'll bring it back. Copy. Okay. All right, so we have to reopen the hearing once it's signed and reopen the hearing and then proceed and yeah. to see if there's any more comments and then close the hearing. And uh, if there's no opposition, then we can take a vote. Pretty, pretty easy. Unless there's somebody here that's opposed to it. I was told that was signed. Oh. I was told. Maybe one copy was signed. Not the one that's in the official file. Unless <laughs> I had nothing to do with getting it signed until right now. Yeah. Thank you. Because I get things done. You do. That's what I do. I get things You get a badge. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got responsibility. She just threatened to tow the Land Rover to South Bank? What's that? She just threatened to tow the Land Rover? No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, thanks for taking care of that, Casey. Okay, we're going to reopen the meeting. Uh, comments. You going to make any more comments for us, or are you all set? I have no further okay. comments. Uh, questions from the board members? Gonna see if there's anybody in opposition first. Anyone here in opposition comments? No one here? Nope. All right. I uh, make a motion that we close the meeting and vote. Close the I hearing. Know, close see. the hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I, get I, this to make I mean, I, I could go home, but. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I move that the board uh, make a finding that the use isn't any more no noxious or what have you to the neighborhood. Etc., and that we uh, grant the the request. Is it, is it a variance or a it's variance? a variance? It's a variance. Yeah, we we approve the variance. Seconded. Okay. Vote. Ready for a vote? Yep. Uh, which uh, we we'll all all voting here? Or? Yes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. John abstains. So okay. So all right. There's five of us here. Okay. Perfect. Five people can vote. Okay. Takes four four Let's votes to pass it. Yeah, right. I'm in. I'm in favor. Okay. We have to sign this, uh, Mr. Decker. Yes. Kathy Felton's not here. Mr. Sukolowski. Uh yes. Uh, Adam is, and Mr. Potter. Yes. And I am too. So it'll be unanimous. Yep. So we'll start at that end. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, you get your Thank paperwork. You. Unfortunately, you had to come back, and we still didn't get it right. Quite all right. <laughs> We tried to convey it, but it didn't work that way. Uh, which one is this? This is the attendance sheet for the night. But now, like when you uh, type the minutes, Make sure you put in there the board voted a finding. Okay? 
because that's key to a variance. Okay. The finding would be in favor of the applicant. Yeah, that it's not any more noxious than what's already there. Do we, uh, Mr. Chairman, have to uh, approve our minutes from the last meeting? We'll do that later. Oh, that later. later. Okay, all right. Mr. Potter? Do this long enough, maybe we can get it right. I'll get pen. Sure. Practice makes perfect. Good thing I got a lot of help. <laughs> okay. We're going to open our, uh, our meeting for the continuance of Dollar General. No, well, yeah. We're going, to, we're going to open it because we have to decide if we're going to, we're going to change the date. We have to open yeah, the meeting. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to change, we're going to set a new date for March 12th, 2020, 7 o'clock. For that hearing, we are changing the date, so we have to re-publish it to a Butters. Um, can I ask the chairman why we're choosing that date? Uh, because I, that was a date I was not able to make it when it was well, uh, set at the last meeting. I thought it was going to be the 20th. Well, we, can February. Do it, we can do it on the 20th, too. You want to do it on the 20th? Well, it doesn't make any difference. I, well, well, I guess I, I guess I have the same question. Maybe... maybe um, the 12th is our normal, regularly scheduled um, meeting for the month of March. Yeah. Right. Okay. And when I came over and asked the, our administrative staff, yep. she had sent out an email whether or not we were, what dates were available. There was, she said there was an issue with town council's availability or something, or that, or the other folks' availability, the applicants' availability. Yeah. So that's that's the issue. That's the issue. Okay. So we can we can vote to postpone the date uh, to be established by the chairman after discussion with uh, both council and the okay. petitioner, and then to send out the notices and members of the board as well. Of course, yeah. yes. Yeah, but we need to we need to send notices out to everybody who is entitled to notice to begin with that we will take up the uh, the hearing where we left it, but that we would do it that night, that way. Council will be available. She wanted, um, is it Adam? Yes, Adam. She wanted Adam, Adam here, and I think that's the where the was here to issue, that was the issue, was he, he was going to be available to be here. She did. She wanted to have the same person available, not have a, a follow-in person. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So there's not, so there's, he's up to date, or she. So we, we will move to postpone the date to be okay. set by the chairman uh, after consultation with uh, Council for the petitioner and council for the. But is 12th board. a good date for the board members, or the 12th's written on here, so it had to be put on here for a reason. So, yeah. so, so, do we want to know like if you're the way? But is that an additional meeting then in March? No, or that's our normal. Oh, we wait. historically meet the second Thursday of the month regularly, and then additional meetings are as needed, right, Mr. Correct. Chair? Right. Okay. That's correct. But so there was a conflict with council. That's on the twentieth date, or is it on the twelfth? There's a council. It's going to be council on the February twentieth date. Right. There, there was, was no council. problem. There was a right. problem. There was a problem, and so the, I thought the twelfth of March was going to work, but you say you're not going to be available. Yeah, right? they circulated a date, and I said the fifth would work for me. And that's a Tuesday. And, yeah, I know it was. A, I think it's a Tuesday. week before that, but that. I, but apparently, I'm not available on the fifth. Okay, we're, and that's why. That's why we. Uh, that's why we uh, moved to I the second so. Thursday of the month. Yeah, right. You're not available on the 12th. No, that's the 20th. Well, I don't see what month of March. It, March 19th will be the Thursday night. Yeah, I was going to say the 20th was the February date. We've got I don't have any problem with going on the 19th. Uh, or you can just leave it up to you to counsel, talk to counsel and talk to uh, okay. both attorneys petitioner or one of you to come up with a, a good day and make try to make sure that uh, you've got the majority of the board uh, oh, no, available. We have to, I mean, we're going to have a lot of hearings. We're going to have a lot of hearings. We don't want to run out of board members. We need to get, have more than the majority. Yes. Think. Now, well, are we still going to pass it? But if somebody misses a meeting, they can watch the tape as long as they don't miss more than one meeting, I believe. Now, are we still going to meet next Thursday? We got another hearing next week. Oh, I understand. Yeah, and, yes. also, and what and that is. Uh, that's the. That's the back lot uh, change of. 
change of um, an existing building. Right, there's an addition going on. Right, uh, in-law apartment. 127 North Main. No, not that. Well, that's what they one. that's what they called on the application. That's what they put on the application, but, but it's, it's not really like that. It's not an. Well, I guess we shouldn't apartment. talk about that specifically now, but we still have a meeting next Thursday. We do. So maybe by next Thursday, you'll have a better app, a uh, better handle on the Dollar General folks and our lawyers. Sure, we can do it then. Yeah, that still gives our folks enough. Okay, and that will give you a chance to talk to council and make sure. Wouldn't it make sense for us to just plan it for our regular meeting day? Well, that's if we the can't 12th. do it, the, yeah. And yeah. if it doesn't work, then push John, it to the following month. I didn't know that was our regular meeting day. And John's out of uh, town, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's our regular meeting, second, second, second Thursday of the month. We yeah. hardly ever meet on a regular meeting night. Okay. <laughs> 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 and is it always Thursdays? Can we yeah. do another day of the week Thursdays? It's, it's like getting very this place. Days. It's yeah. Th this this fix fits in with the planning board. The select board meets on Wednesday night. They got a system that's it's always ZBA's always got Thursday nights. And, and Frontier meets on, on Tuesday night, which I'm getting off of, so it's not going to be a real problem with me. I'm going to retire, and uh, but you know Thursday seems to work. Okay. Fast. You can be here. Whatever 20th. day you want to be here, I'll be here. So the twentieth. You all set. But the 20th of what month, Marty? 19th, 19th of March. 19th. Oh. I don't want you to put that down there. Well, because it was the 20th of February yeah. we're going to meet. I know. She That's next March. week. And She's got it down here, for the, had it for the 20th. Had it for the 12th of March. Right. Right. So you want to go to the 20th is Friday night in March. You want to go to the 19th? 19th. Yeah, John, because you can't make it the 12th, correct? Yeah, that's right. So March? 19th. 19th. Mr. Decker, are you all right? Yes, I'll be available. I know I'm all right. Okay. Mr. Potter, are you all set? Mm hmm Okay, so I'll get back to council, and I'll get that straightened away. But the issue was she wanted to have our regular council here. She did not want to have an alternate. Well, I understand. Yeah. I'm fine with That's that. a good idea. That came from my boss. Anyway. Okay. So we're going to... Um, notify people of this change of venue. I will make sure that everyone gets an email of corrections. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman, one other point I have on that. Just make sure our, we put this on our the same uh, wordage for next week's meeting, right? So it's on the agenda for next week. So if we got to talk about it, we can talk about okay. it and it yep. won't be outside of the open meeting law okay. requirement and it will be on our agenda. So we're going to discuss this March 19th meeting at our next meeting. We're going to open it up again. And well, start. right, because we're going to be here anyways. Right, okay. It looks like we're going to be very busy from things. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting very confused. Okay. And the other thing about it is if we're going to meet on the 19th, I don't want to meet on the 12th as well. Okay, so right. if she, because I know she, she, we, have, we have excellent staff, and if there's already things in the pipeline for the 12th, you know, then, you know, two, three weeks in a row, because I'll move my schedule from one week to the next, but I'm not going to have four ZBA meetings in one month. I hope not. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm not going to, I mean, we got to, we got to, someone's going to make some, I'm going to make some sacrifices. I'll move my trip from the, uh, you know, from the 19th to the 12th. I'll stay in town if there's a meeting, but if there's not a meeting, I'll be in town on the 19th. Okay. You know, it's not a problem, but just. We got to make sure that we communicate that to them that if we're going to have a meeting for Dollar General on the 19th, whatever other business we're having on the 12th, we got to have. I have a suggestion in the future. There's a program called Doodle or, or whatever. <laughs> and they, they use it at Frontier to, to schedule meetings. And not everybody always makes it, but they put down a whole bunch of dates and they try to figure out where it works for most people. And uh, we may have to resort to that just to make sure that we do it openly and fairly. You know? I, don't, I don't think we should be meeting every no, other week. No, I mean, I agree. Right. Yeah, why don't we just great. meet monthly on a regular Thursday We're and then to, meetings that, happening. you know, we have to push something down the road, we push it to the next meeting on the Thursday that we meet. Yeah, but we also have to set up the hearing and start the hearing before the clock runs out on us because if we don't take action the petitioner gets their permit. All right, we have 35 days from some the time someone pulls a permit mm -hmm. to act on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there yeah, are reasons when we have to. Yeah. Right. We don't act on it, we're caught. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And my computer was not working, I didn't have one. 
so there was not much contact going on. <laughs> anyway, okay. I'll make so, a motion that we close the uh, hearing regarding the um, date on the Dollar General LLC hearing. Okay, close, close the hearing? No, we're not closing no, the no, hearing. Here. We're not closing we're, the hearing. No, we're, we're closing discussion on we're the date. Discussion. We're going to move the date for mm -hmm. further dis discussion. further discussion and relative actions there too. Okay, and uh, we probably have to move it, postpone it, or continue it two or three more times. Yeah. Because we're looking for information, and they're not we're not getting some of it. Okay. I, 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 I'm all for the information as we talked you know, about before. One of the, Mr. Chair, one of the pieces of information was I thought we were supposed to get uh, some documents that were before the planning board, and, and I don't know if you guys got them. But we did not get them. I didn't get any. Nothing. Well, okay. They're not due yet, but we should have got them. <laughs> okay, so I will check on yeah. well, planning board information. Yeah, and you should check with the. Uh, Adam Costa to make sure that he contacts the petitioner and tells us that, tell them that we haven't got any further information that they've sent it, where they sent it, and might have sent it to Deerfield, New Hampshire. I don't know. I'll go pick it up in Deerfield, Florida. You Could be. That's probably or Deerfield Beach, Florida, Florida yeah. Isn't <laughs> that spring break? for everybody that's in college. So. Okay, plenty of board information and we gotta get a hold of town council to check on, make sure that they're getting the information that yep. they're supposed to to us. I'll well, find out where it's sitting because yeah. you're at the yeah, and, and I would, <coughs> if we don't have that information, I don't think we should go forward with the next hearing until we make sure we have it beforehand. That's what I was. And we should have it to review it. Yeah, we should have it. In a, in a, Reasonable the, amount of times that the, we look at. And whatever prints or changes need to be put out there on a the table. Right. Well, I, yeah, they have to be put out there for people well, to put But what I'm saying is so people ahead of time can look at it. Yeah, it kind of irks me when they come in and they put, the, put, put it out there and say, well, decide. Well, you're going to have to put the brakes on the new administrative assistant to make sure that before dates get scheduled for meetings that you may have have notified the rest of the board members individually or what have you. You can't hold a meeting. Right, and I don't want to waste the town's money with right. multiple newspaper postings right. either. I don't either. All right. And yep. When you talk to uh, council, find out if we have to turn around and uh, uh, also put a legal ad in. We're sending letters just to cover ourselves. All right. Well, whether or not we have to send the other, and make sure they whatever notice gets sent out, make sure they approve the format so we don't get somebody criticizing us. Okay. Uh, motion to close this discussion. Seconded. Yep. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. For your you direction. You need to take a vote. Hmm. You need to ask for Do we have to have a vote on this? You, well, you cannot just have make a motion to second. Okay. okay. Uh, do, yes. 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 Favor. Yes. 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 Favor. Yes. Any opposed? Okay. Okay. I'll get my Roberts book out. I know. I'm gonna <laughs> okay. We're going to uh, an application for Renaissance building for a special permit, and that's going to be an issue permit for extension of 29,960 square feet to the west side of existing building in a, in a review of 2020. I just missed what was the result of the. Of what date? March 19th. Been March 19th. Officially no, not no, officially. Not, not officially. <laughs> Unofficially the 19th. Unof proposed no. And you're going to continue to talk about it next week? At no. Possibly? No. No, we're not going to talk about, we're not going to talk about that. All we're going to do is set a time for a date when we get legal counsel to see if it's okay that we did this and he's going to be here. Okay. That's what it comes down to. Thank you. We'll, there'll be plenty of notice for so people. I know. Tentatively the 19th. Yeah. Thank we'll have plenty of people, time for people to come and express their frustration, <laughs> varied opinions. All right, so you'll know ahead of time. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we have anyone from Renaissance Builders here? Can you uh, pass them a pad and get the, the names on everybody who's. 
people they've got to sign who's ever representing so that our scribe will have all the information sounds good You know what we like to have that as a board set up for? Uh, there's a camera there, and if, if people at home can see what's up. Uh, yeah. Oh, is that going to, I don't know. Yeah, no, it should, he'll get it. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll get, get it. it. Yeah, we got it. One over there, it's there. Okay, okay. And one over there. I thought we had to set it up there. Oh, the camera can get it. Okay. My guess is if he doesn't get it, he'll come out and say something. Here you go on, plug it too. Two of hearing this. Hi, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is Jesse Marino. I'm with uh, Proterra Design Group. I'm here on behalf of Renaissance Builders and Smith's Interconnect tonight um, to discuss an application for a special permit. Um, Smith's Interconnect is a uh, leading provider of elect electronic uh, components and RF products. Um, you may know of them by a previous name, uh, Militech. That's one of their technology products. Uh, so they do have a, a long history in town. Um, the existing building is located on 6 North Street, um, which is uh, you know, not too far away over here, basically between the railroad tracks and Yankees building there, uh, between the barbecue and uh, B. Gorey fabrication. What we're proposing here is an addition to that building so that they can uh, keep the business in town. They're looking to add three or four more new jobs. Um, so the project should add to the, to the tax revenue stream here without any real additional burden to existing resources. Um, we don't have to extend or, or upgrade any utilities. So we're requesting a special permit tonight from the zoning board for an extension of an existing non-conforming use and an extension of a non-conforming structure on this parcel. Um, this here is the existing building. This is just showing um, the west side of the building we're proposing to This here is the location where we are, we're on this lot here. Here is the way the lot sits at, at the moment. <clears throat> so as you can see here, the, the site currently has a 12,000 square foot building on a half acre lot. Um, the way it's set up now, there's a, a pavement section in the front of the structure, in the front of the building, and a couple of sheds. Um, to the south is a parcel um, that's gravel right now that they lease for parking. Um, what we're proposing to do is to add a 25 by 119 foot building to the west side. in order to accommodate the expansion. Um, and as a provision in your bylaw, since this is an existing non-conforming use, um, it's an industrial warehouse uh, business use in this CI district, um, we're coming to you for a modification or extension of that use. Um, so really there's under um, 2250 non-conforming use instructors. We're not changing from the existing industrial business and storage use. That will be the same. What we're asking is to extend the building to accommodate their, their new project. Um, to the, so the existing building um, doesn't meet the setback requirements on the rear and the, and the south here. Um, that's an existing condition. It's been like that for some time. Um, we're not proposing to make those any more non-conforming. We're proposing to um, move to the west with our expansion. Uh, towards the front setback. Um, there is a, a note in your table of dimensional requirements, and I heard um, someone talking about it kind of before the meeting started, and um, 
basically it's a footnote um, into the table. So normally there's a 20 foot setback. Um, however, um, buildings in, that are within 100 feet, parcels that are within 100 feet of a structure, um, you're allowed to average uh, the setbacks of those two. So what we've done in this case is um, the gory fabrication to the north has about a seven foot setback as it currently is. The site to the south is vacant, so we use the 20 foot as allowed by right. If we average those two, that's how we get to the 13 foot and change where we're um, coming up to that point by um, sort of maximizing our ability to um, extend this use. Um, the other way that this site is non-conforming is with um, lot coverage. So lot coverage in the zoning is defined as basically pervious surfaces, which include uh, pavement and built and uh, roof area. So in this particular case, um, we are expanding in a location that was previously paved. So um, we're not looking to change that. We're basically swapping pavement for roof. And in fact, we're actually ending up to be a, a, a few square feet less than what the existing is. Um, we're proposing to keep that existing parking arrangement to the south. Um, we're looking to reuse the existing signs in the building. And um, again, we're here before you for that proposed extension of that use. And um, as such, we're asking you to grant it uh, based upon that the extension is uh, not more substantially detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood than the existing use. Um, one slight change to the plans that you have, um, and the, uh, the project architect here is, is as well, um, we changed the location of, of one of the access doors on the facility, and I just have a sketch that shows you guys that. I, I don't think it's meaningful to the application that you have in front of you, but I just want to make sure that you guys have the here so I can see a couple copies of that. Basically, um, on the north side of the building, there was a man door here, and they're looking to kind of pull it around the corner towards the front. That's the change. I'm just going to snip that back to you folks. We have a representative of the business owner here. We also have an architect here as well. So if you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. No more questions. When, when was the original building built? Hmm. How long has it been kind of non-conforming? Yeah, um, good question. I think probably in, uh, we can find that out for you. I, I want to say in the, about the 1960s. That sounds about right. And we've been there for 20 years. 20 years. That building was originally built by Louie and Abercrombie for a beer distribution site. And it had a, uh, a loading dock to take the beer off the railroad cars to the back. Okay. And I think also had additional land on the back side towards the railroad tracks, which has been at some point in time conveyed to uh, the property that uh, Blake oh. Gorey now owns. Skolsky's okay. area, Wolfram's. Yeah. We have and that same understanding, yes. Excuse me? I said we have that same understanding, that's and correct. If we look at the plans that are there, it, I don't know if it's a, a scriber's error or what, but it looks like that the back of that building, uh, some of it, uh, maybe built over uh, Mr. Gorey's land. I, I believe it is, and I believe Mr. Gorey is, uh, knows about it, right? You guys have some sort of agreement. Right, he owns, um, there's a leaflet, I guess, of a building that's, that's, that is uh, attached to the space that we lease from uh, Mildred Green. That's correct. You lease that land from him? No, we lease it from Mildred Green. Okay. But the point is, some of that land in the non-conforming use was conveyed away a number of years ago. Okay. You're talking about those feet here? Yeah. So yeah, there goes around yeah, the, the east side. Yeah. I think right. it's actually, that's like a little storage area, right? I'm that's not right. sure you guys are using that. But I mean, your, your building is actually... Bigger than your property. I think the building is actually located on the abutter's property. Mm. Um, we're, not, we're not disputing that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, just, just to reiterate, the field card here, it looks year built to 71, so late 60s, early 70s. Well, I think it's it. 71 because I think I looked the deed up the other day. Ah, there you go. Mr. Chair, I have a question for yes. these folks. Can I ask them? Yes, go ahead. So what's your parking arrangement? Because, uh, you know, you know, there's no room to park a single vehicle now on your, on your property pretty much after this, if this expansion happens. Yes, um, the way it is now, um, they have the agreement to use the uh, lot to the south owned by Schechterly. They have an, a, a, an arrangement with them. Um, we did get a supporting letter from the building inspector about that, that it is allowed. Um, there was some question on whether that was, was lawful. Yeah, I um, spoke to the building yeah. inspector. It is. It but, does, well, yep. but my question is, what's the arrangement? The arrangement is they have a lease. And they okay, so is it what's the arrangement? How long? How many? Is it forever? Is it is existing? Is it a is it a deeded right? I mean, what happens in 25 years when you go away, or next year when Checkerly sells his lot? You know, and now we now we get no place to park, and you guys sell, and it's not even a, a building that anybody would want to purchase because they can't even back a truck in there. Well, we're not changing that. No, no, no. I, I'm asking because I'm concerned about the future of the town. Yeah. Well. Right now, they, they're in the same, same boat. No, right now, they can park a few vehicles and get a truck in on their property. Yeah, they can park about five in, in the front. And right. We're, not, we're basically keeping that arrangement. Um, I hear what you're saying. Okay. Um, so what is the lease. arrangement? Do you want to speak to the arrangement? Right now, our lease is, the, our lease is dated um, to expire concurrent with the lease with Mildred Green for the facility. And you know that date off answer? Yes, it's uh, January 2022. Okay, so it's a short term lease. Three years. So it's pretty so short term. Smith's corporate, Smith's corporate will only allow us to extend leases for three year periods. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is the beauty of a special permit is that you can condition that. We're not asking for a variance. We're asking to extend this use. So if, a, if you granted a variance, and then we're not asking for that. Well, I think you're going to have to ask for that, Mr. Decker. I think yep. that, from what I understand, unless you can prove that the cover was already so much on that lot, right, is, and it's going, you think you can expand your green area. Uh, I don't know that you can. And if you can't, you're probably going to need a variance to, to, and whether the board can give that, you're going to have to prove a hardship. I, I'm right? not sure that I follow why we need a variance. If it's existing and we're asking to but you're, extend you're, that you're, use you're, and we're not changing the- You're the, covering the whole lot with The lot is covered now. It's 80% now, right? Lot coverage is building. I, I under, totally understand what you're saying, but the lot coverage in the zoning is pavement and building, and we're not changing that. And you've got the computations for us? We do. We do. Is it one of these handouts? It's, it's on S1. There's a, a zoning table there. So um, the combination of the pavement and the building before and the pavement and the building after is identical. It's and actually we, a little bit less. Do we, have a, do we have that plan? You do have that plan. Um, it's folded right in front of Mr. Sadowski. Why would, why would it be less? Because at the front edge, we're actually reclaiming some of the pavement and putting a little bit of gravel in because they don't need that, that width there. There's also some pavement to the south here that's kind of broken up. And we're proposing to get rid of that because it's got no real use to us. Well, Mr. Sadowski had a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Sokolowski had a, a, a really insightful comment with parking mm -hmm. and the interest to the town. If, if you all can only do three-year leases and, uh, and for some reason you can't extend it anymore and you aren't leasing that building and you build on that yeah. portion, it really is, is there a unusable to anyone who can't get parking to use it. After for a subsequent correct, but but in your zoning, you are allowed to use um, lots within 200 feet, right? So there are, there are correct now, there's, there's land across the street, there's land 
uh, Gorey Town land and there's land to the, to the south here. I agree, it needs to be conditioned properly and it needs to be recorded properly, but those are allowed. I understand, so I would you, what would you recommend as this is the appropriate? I, would, I guess I would suggest a condition, if it's amenable, that um, you know the special permit is valid to the end of the uh, to the end of their lease, and that it can be administratively extended through the building department if they show that they have an additional lease. So uh, that lease has been extended. Um, wait, so let's wait till these guys stop talking. Oh, I'm on this. I think they're just doing some calculations, but. Yeah. But John, I, I think you you know what we're allowed to do and what's in the best interest of the town is, is two separate things. Right. Right. <clears throat> I understand. I'm not going to have an argument with you, sir. So just let me talk for a minute. Okay. I'm thinking about down the road here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you add on to that building, and then you go away. Whether it's in five years, fifteen years, or twenty years, that building is not marketable without any parking. And I understand that we have a right in our bylaw to allow for off-site parking. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at who your abutters are and what the community needs, right? So what is it comfortable for this board to have as you know, a deeded parking uh, agreement with Mr. Schechterly, mm -hmm. an, uh, uh, an agreement with Newell Jarden that's <clears throat> deeded, as it's forever, because buildings don't just disappear mm -hmm. as soon as you build them. And for big corporations, it's easier to just walk away. Okay. And then it's then it's then it's our then it's then it, then I well, I live here every day. Then I have to either have a vacant building in town that's not reusable okay. because there's not even one single parking spot with it, and that's that's a holdup for me. But that's not true. There is parking. We are proposing parking on the front. Okay. Um, How much parking are you proposing? Proposing four now. In, in our defense, we've been to the planning department, <coughs> planning board, excuse me, planning board chairs here. We haven't worked through all of those details yet. Um, there may be some changes, but um, that would be moot unless you guys, uh, as a board, are sort of on board with the approach here. Um, I agree with you, Adam. You're, you're thinking ahead, and that's proper. But what I would say now is there's not appropriate parking on the lot now. So, so why would we be inclined to let you lessen it? Because the standard is making it not substantially more detrimental, so that's that's a choice you guys yeah, have to come together like as. It is more detrimental. It's, it's, a, <clears throat> it says substantially more detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood, so it's not a high bar as a variance, and that's for the board. We're here to present you it. Applied for, you applied for a special permit, special not for permit. not not for variance. So that's correct, because okay. the, I would agree that I, the the bar for variance is much higher, mm -hmm. and there's there's a chance for you guys to, to set precedent and do things that I know boards don't want to do. But that's exactly why these provisions are in the zone, in my opinion. So I will tell you, I, uh, you know, I like the fact that mm -hmm. the business wants to expand. I yep. think it's a good area for the expansion. I like the idea. I like the concept. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the parking there okay. and, and that, you know, I don't want to be faced like uh, Mr. Sokolowski and in some years, having a, a building that's unusable, then it's a detriment to the town yep. because it's uh, a big, <coughs> an eyesore in a nice district. So I would ask, and I don't know mm -hmm. how the rest of the board feels, is that you know you think about our concerns and come back with a parking solution for us. I mean, are we losing are we losing parking spaces with that addition? Or well, there's no stripe parking there now. So, I but mean, there's pavement there. There's pavement. But, right. Um, and, it, it, you know, there's enough room right now to pull a trailer truck in there, you know, to drive it off the side of the road. You build the expansion out, you might not be able to do that. And then, obviously, the other buildings on that street, Newell Jarden Corporation, a fabrication company, they have to have access with big vehicles. They're not, small, you know, it's not car traffic, it's truck traffic. So mm -hmm. that's a concern for me. And it's a concern going forward, you know. Um, so I think that I would want to see a long-term agreement with an abutter at a bare minimum. Perpetuity. You right. You need to, it needs to go The building the is going to be there forever. Well, right? Yeah. You have, perpetuity. Okay. You need a, we, we, you're going to need the lease to be recorded in perpetuity. 
we, we asked the building inspector that. The zoning does not say it has to be in perpetuity. It does say that it has to be recorded. But well, we don't have to give it to either. No, that, you're exactly right. right. It is, you don't have to, but I would ask that, you know, we, you know, we can try to work through that. You know, here, here's the thing, if it's, and I, I don't know if you guys approached Mr. Shechtley, but he, I don't think he's willing to sell the property to you guys or, or to Mrs. Mrs. Green. Um, so I don't, I think that's off the table. Um, I don't know, you said that you're handcuffed with a long-term lease, and that's why we suggested maybe having the permit, you know, sunset when the lease is up. But that building, but the addition's gonna be there, and if the permit sunsets, what, what's gonna happen? Well, we can the, talk about that. You tear maybe, down maybe, the addition. So would you be willing to put a half million dollar bond up to tear it down? Well, that, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I mean, mean that's what it'll cost to, to, you can ask. to tear it down and, and what have you. Yeah. Well, we, well, what could happen is maybe they could get a price to, if that's a concern, and this is one of the ways forward for them, and this is acceptable. But we can look into that. We could, um, you know, an architect it, or somebody. It is, it is a freestanding building. I mean, it's directly adjacent to the building. It would be touching it, but it's structurally independent of the base. So we, <coughs> that is a concern, and the, and but the Smiths are willing to do that. We could potentially, someone could do. Um, you know, a, a certified, uh, I would say, like a um, cost estimate on what it would take to remove the building and they could bond for it. That's not unprecedented to do. I know it's done with cell towers all the time. Um, whether or not that works out and they're willing to do that, we can certainly, we can go down that road if that is a, is that something you want to see? Well, for, for me, the bottom line is not tearing down the building. Sure. Or it's really just making sure there, if this your use, the applicant's use changes, sure. that it's not an unusable building sure. because of the lack of parking. Sure. That's that's yep. That's that's the bottom. Line. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the whole thing is there was land that went with this property to begin with that was conveyed out after the buildings were built. I believe. Am I correct? I'm not sure of that. What I, here's what I here's what I know. Uh, I can share with what I know. I'm not pretending that I know the history of Action Seven. What I do know I don't is, know is what it seems to make sense to me is that this parcel here, I don't know if they own this, but Gory owns it. It seemed to be like this these these strips here were sidings for this railroad. So at one time there probably were sidings here, um, and, and whether or not. Um, you know, this, this side was part of this to the back, and we do some research on it, but the way it sits now is this piece here belongs to uh, the Gorys here. The same thing here. There's, there's really, um, rectangular pieces that abut the main pieces on North Street, probably because they were rail sidings. Um, up front, um, in Schechter, it looks like that rail siding has been combined into his parts of was not for whatever reason she had. Comments or questions? I, I have one. Uh, if, let's just say, that you get a piece of paper from the owner that you can use this, what happens when there's a lease there? A lease on, on this other property. Which property? Any, anything else in there. Say he put something else in there. And there say he rents it out. Help, help me out. Uh, which property? This that, property? You're, that you're going to put your parking on. This here? No, no. The, 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 any of the abutters' lots. Right. So right now we have an agreement um, that is the same as the agreement for the building. So these guys, as they're using the building, their agreement whatever, three years at a time, the same as here. If, what would happen if, they, if, if this wasn't granted? No, it was granted, but there's a change in there. Say he rents it out for something else. Well, they, have, they're, they don't have a whole thing. They have 24,000 square feet. This parcel is in their agreement. What happens if, if, they, if, if they didn't, if, if moving forward, they, they didn't, like, I guess I'm, I'm not quite understanding. Right now, they have an exclusive right to use 24,000 square feet in the lease. So, unless the lease goes up and he doesn't extend it, I don't think he can 
you know, we can't take that away from them. He would have to, he would, in two years, he would have to say, I'm not, I'm not going forward with your lease. But what if he rents the piece out to somebody? He is renting, he's renting it to them. But he might rent it to someone else. That would have to be, then the lease would Cause be up. Because my understanding was our council wanted this written with some kind of controls in there that this was not going to get out of hand. That's a real concern that they had. Like you like you said. Well, it has to be, or Mr. Decker used the word perpetual or right, whatever. Right. So you have you have to have it uh, long term, not a two year lease. Right. So I would say that these folks, one, they need to go come back to us with uh, a parking plan that's long term. For me to support their expansion, I, I'm supportive of uh, business in general, and I think it's great to have a company like them in town that, that have been here for a long time. But I can't support this application unless there's a long-term solution to parking uh, that goes with the building, regardless of who owns it. Um, you know, they have. Uh, I think they have options around them. That, that they brought up for parking spaces. I'm not, you know, against that, but I think they need to talk to Newell Jardin or who roams across the street or, or wherever where where there's there's a long term for me to support it, there's got to be a long term option that goes with the building because to me this addition, if they go away, it makes it not you know any not really a resaleable building. It's a non conforming building as it is. I, well, I understand it's a non conforming building. Yes, but you're going to make it more non conforming. Right. So well, that's doing. what they're asking for. I understand they're here to ask because they want to do more business here. I, I get that. But there has to be room to park cars and trucks, and there has to be room for them to unload their materials and for the other people on that street to get the materials in and out of their businesses. What are we talking Right. Wait, hold on, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, can you introduce yourself? Oh, wait a minute, let's, let's finish with them first, please. All right, I think he's with them. He's with them. He's with them. Well, then come up here, give us your name, please. Yeah, sorry. Go with that. When you say long term, do you have an idea what you're talking about as far as time? Well, the, the perpetual would be uh, forever. You know, forever. That would be the best solution. But, but, but I think, you know, there's also the option that if the building can be taken down and it's paid for by somebody not the town, yeah. when you lose your parking, that's another option. I think about the, you guys are the ones yeah. to think about what your options well, we, are. Do, we do have to think about that. But I guess, I mean, on one hand, you're saying perpetual. And perpetual, although I agree, is perfect, it may not be an option. Mr. Schechter may not want to do a perpetual lease. And in that case... We, we couldn't or between a rock and a hard well right it, so it, it's it's beyond that it, or it's, it's more than that so smith's is a technology company they're not landowners right by, by nature they don't manage their own properties they lease 90 percent of their property worldwide i think they're i only know of two businesses worldwide that they actually own that property that they that they operate from um so I can I understand a desire to have a longer term parking situation on that property while we're using it, but perpetually is on that furthest extreme. Well, I mean, the useful life of the building is another is another standard because that you know that building is not going to exist 400 years from now. Clearly. It's 50 years old right now. Yeah, I know, but there's it is 50 years old. But just two years ago, we. <clears throat> did a total overhaul on the inside and some of the exterior of that space. So it has been revitalized very recently. Right, and, and I think your point speaks exactly to mine, that you're not in the land owning business, you lease property, and you're willing to up and leave. So that's why we need to protect the property in the town and not have a vacant building there. So, I mean, as, as the building owner, if you, owned that property, you know, they need to come to the table to work with all of us as well. I mean, so so that's another key player. I understand you're the leasee, but the actual building owner, you know, whether it's for the, for the life of the building or willing to put money in bond to take down the expansion to, to, to do that, those are options that I think 
would be best suited for you to speak with your team and come back to us at, uh, at a later date at our next hearing to continue the hearing. At this point, I move that we continue the hearing to a mutually agreeable date when you guys have okay. alternatives to That's present fine. to I us. Just, I guess I just want to, if we could spend a minute and just some of the alternatives. So one is a long-term parking plan. I heard that. Is there appetite for a bond situation where the whenever, however they can extend the parking when that ends, they have to, they would have to rip it down if they didn't. Is that acceptable? I, I, I think as long as I is yeah that, is that a protection? You know? I think there's I think there's probably a whole host of reasons that we options we haven't even thought of here. Okay. That that you know I, I, I'm I think that that's that's your job to figure that out and to propose options for us. Uh, but you know the bottom line is I think you get the sense of the board yeah. that we don't want a building that's not going to be usable because yeah. you're putting on an addition for a future owner, for future user. Un understood. I would just and we can, we'll go back do some homework. But I would just leave you with this: and if the building is existing not conforming, which is what we're saying, and this doesn't work out, these folks leave. The next person has the same problem, and you have a vacant building. I understand that. Okay, so that is the that's the flip side, and there's still the parking problem, there's still the leasing problem, there's still all of that. So that. Well, we want to work with you. Okay, we do. Right. Yeah, and I want to work with you too. But you got to you know we got to understand that you're you are making the parking problem worse with the expansion, not better. Okay. I don't think so, but that's yes. No, you have several options to, to go forward and, and look at. You can, you know, do your business analysis of what's the okay. most Great. cost effective and what's going to help your firm stay here in town and, and whatever. But I think the board is basically saying uh, we don't have a tremendous objection. We just want to make sure that we're protected. Yes. Yeah. Understood. If you do look into bonds. Mm -hmm. I would want to make sure the bond, even though you might price it out to be ten thousand dollars to take down the building, mm -hmm. that it would that if it were to be a long term bond, it'd have to be have an inflation rider on it. Oh yeah, and be made from a licensed surety company. Okay. So I guess what we're saying acceptable to council. Sure. That we you come back with your proposals. Is we'll, we'll have to look at them yep. in writing what you want to do, okay. and then we'll take an action on what we think is the best, and we work from there. Okay, perfect. I think we're willing to work with you, but I think Excellent. we need to protect. It's, it's kind of a. I think Mr. Decker has it right that we're working in a non-conforming building and more making it more non-conformable, and that gets to be an issue for a board that starts letting that go by because who's next? Yeah, I, I understand. You have to understand it. That's who's next. Yeah, you know we got laws we have to follow. And if we start breaking and changing the laws, we have the next person comes along, we have a lawsuit in their hands because yep. we let you get away with it. And the next person comes along, well, how come they got away with it and you didn't? I, I totally agree. No, I so. just I, I think from our perspective is we're not thinking we're making any more nonconforming because the parking is held right now by lease on a site adjacent within 200 feet, which is allowed in the zoning. But it is a discretionary permit, and you guys. You have to make that determination yourselves. So we'll go back, we'll sharpen our pencils here, and we'll see if we can improve on the long-termness of the parking plan or some other option to protect the board here. I don't know what the, the land to the south, what the long-term goal of the owner of that property is. I do know that they got permits to put a, uh, a car wash on there a number of years ago, and that didn't happen, and some other things. The adjacent parcel or the yes. one around? Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I, I don't Grocery know. Grocery store, that didn't go in. You talking about the Chateau Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. He's had a lot of things, I think, but okay. Um, I'm asking the board that we are going to accept that and... Um, no, I would move that we no, continue we, this year. Continue, we're going to accept what we're looking for, though, with the... No, they're going to come back with Come their, back with this, I'm saying. We'll we're going to we're gonna ask them to come back with information. Mm -hmm. We okay. find out all acceptable, anyone? So It's very good. So, so the way we'd like to, leave, I'd like to leave it is that when you have some proposals, mm -hmm. you notify the town, and then we would schedule a hearing accordingly. Okay, if we, that's fine. Reschedule, reopen yeah, their hearing. If we do that, they have to re-notify everybody. If we set a date, 
<clears throat> and we work to meet that date and we say that we need to get it to you guys a week before or wherever we want, then the town doesn't have to re-notify everybody. So how long do you think it's going to take you guys to come up with this kind of, uh, this kind of information? You guys were debating earlier about your next meeting date being on the 12th of that's, March, right? That's right. That's, we don't know. You know we're that's thinking so. we might have a meeting on the 19th of March also. Yeah, it looks like it's 19th, if anything. And, so, but we are meeting next week. <clears throat> but you are meeting next week. I think, I think next week is probably too short. Too short. Okay. So, but if we set it to some future date, that would be acceptable to us. It is for you. Well, we're going to try to not have that meeting on the 12th. So you want to do the 19th? And then the these other. folks are good for the 19th, then we yeah, know that. Straight for the 19th. Okay. That's, that's Unless the chairman finds that we, it's not going to work. I think we'll all have to check with them. Yeah. Any, any, anything that's March 19th, correct? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Anything that requires any legally should be uh, forwarded to our council to them. Well, they're going to have to look at the, they're going to have to look at the bond. They're going to have to look at the lease, you know, et cetera, to make sure that it, it's all, you know, positive for the town. But we'll make, we'll make the choice. And yeah. They, they will make, make sure. Make it legal. But they're going to make sure that, <clears throat> So is that a week prior to the 19th? Is that is that what we're talking we're about? Try for the 19th, I think. Right. If you have information, you can submit it administratively a week prior. That would be excellent. Okay. Good. Thank you. So let's schedule a meeting for the 19th. But that is going to be really subject to this other hearing. We're going to try to That's set. That's fine. So we, we accept that. That's so okay. Just <clears> remember <throat> that night 19th. You might have to pack a sleeping bag. Well, that, that's another got another hearing. Are going they to available? Take. At, uh, oh, a lot of time. Do you want us to go first? We can go first. <laughs> yeah, we should have these guys go first. We go go six first. So me change the meeting from seven to six. Could that be all right? That's that. fine with me. Sure. sure. So we have to post it as being six, not seven. Right. right. Okay. The Dollar General thing can still start at right. seven. Uh, we have a hand in the back that we have some of the polls here or comments from the community. He's got a planning board report, does he? No, the planning board report. My name is Kip Camosa. I'm a member of the planning board. And, you know, I'm here to try to help these folks and also so our boards kind of get on the same page. And uh, to prevent the applicant from being bounced from one board to the other, I just wanted to express some concerns that the planning board had. More procedural things, but I want everybody to understand it. Uh, the non-conforming use section 2250 of our zoning bylaws does allow these people to allow uh, apply for a special permit uh, for a lot of different things, and it goes down to section 2253, uh, non-conforming structures, and it has uh, four <coughs> subsections. Uh, a is pretty brief; it's just reconstruction, extend structural changes. But if, when you get into D, which really addresses what this is, it's the reconstruction, extension, <coughs> structural changes of a, a non-conforming structure in such a manner as to increase in existing non-conformity or to create a new non-conformity, including the extension of an exterior wall at or along the same non-conforming distance within the required yard, shall require the issuance of a variance from the Board of Appeals. The reason I bring that forward is because that is our bylaw. And if they don't ask for that, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't ask or it shouldn't be granted, but if they don't, when they come to the planning board, we're going to say, well, you know, this is what you need, and then you're going to be back in the same place. Uh, we. It's kind of our understanding that the types of relief that they need is for the size of the building, you know, the coverage, lot line setbacks, and parking. And to deal with the parking, um, they can have parking within 200 feet of the adjacent area, but it does have to be a, 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 a larger amount of time, but it also has to be recorded in the Registry of Deeds. So if it's, whether it's 10 years, 20 years, whatever you folks decide, it's something that has to be recorded in the Registry of Deeds, so it will run with that property. But also to address why this needs to go a little further is that in their proposal they have some parking spaces because I think there's 13 feet left. Regardless of this, in the parking um, section of it, it says the required parking area shall not be located within 25 feet of the pavement of a travelway. So that's something else that the planning board would look at. So these are things that 
you know, I just want them to be aware of so they can address with you guys. So if you give them a passing grade and they come back to us, we're not going to say, oh, what about this or what about that? Everybody's on the same page. Okay? Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Kamosa, for, for bringing that up. I was able to see bits and pieces of your meeting um, with, with these folks. But um, I tend to have the same feeling on Section D, that they, that they need a variance as well as a special permit. So, okay, we did talk to the building inspector, and he well, didn't. He didn't go down the road of D because his <coughs> point was within the required yard is the side yard, and if we're not making the side yard anymore, not conforming. But again, I'm just and, and I'm not legal counsel either. Um, mm -hmm. I think our chairman could communicate and ask our legal counsel for that. Um, if you if you need it, we we don't want to have to do this twice, no, more, I, right? So I guess that's my point. If yeah. that's what you guys are thinking, is there a way to ask that question? Right. Yes. So can we expand towards the front? And, and that's you know it's another good point on the on the 13 feet, you know the parking and then the obstruction of the lane. But what I would say is now you don't have that. If 25. No no no, no I, I agree that you have a short area have now. now. I, I agree you have a very small area for parking now. That's where you're leasing space to park. Right. But your application is for a special permit. It is. Not for variance. Correct. And if we have to change that, we can. But right. again, you have to refile. Again, though, um, <coughs> the way that that was interpreted was if you're expanding it towards the area that's not conforming, and we're saying we're not. So mm -hmm. if, if, if that's a concern, how do we get a ruling on that, I guess? From council? Is that possible? Either it, what it, Kippy's saying is that the planning board. It, isn't going to buy it unless there's a variance granted. Right, but the building inspector is a zoning enforcement officer, so he makes that determination. Right. Unless you, I mean, you can overrule him, but that's how it works. Well, I don't know. If, if I was sitting in your position, I'd probably come back with a, a new application that encompassed everything so you make sure that there was no cloud later that somebody appealed it because you didn't ask for something right. I think, okay. I think Kibbe's putting you on notice that there are certain people in town who feel that a variance is necessary. And I'm inclined because one of the notes <coughs> I had made on this thing before I even came in that the, a variance was needed, right? Cool. And the, it was only a special permit that was requested. But if this this is then submitted to the building inspector, right? And his signature is on it to send it to you. If he needed a variance, he would say that. Right? Well. I don't want to speak for him. Well, you asked for a special permit. You didn't ask for a variance. You know, so. I mean, he doesn't proofread the, everything for you. He's not working for you. He's working for the town. Okay. We'll check. So maybe shoot him an email and okay. talk about it. You know, I read, it's easier for you to talk to someone that is he here 40 hours a week than right. us that's here once a, or twice a month. He did bring it to your attention about the setback. He is saying for the front, but we can yeah. we can talk oh, to the him. front. I'm talking about the front. He did tell you you didn't need a variance. He didn't need one for the front. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and more to my point, and I'm just trying to be informational here, is when you made reference to the footnote three that provides, you know, for an average of things, that really kind of goes along with section D, because section D of the uh, section 20, 2153 doesn't specifically say the side yard. It just talks yards, and it, it, it's encompassing the entire lot. And that's you know, why I, I just wanted to you know, bring it to your attention. Because, and I'm not speaking for the entire planning board, but if you bring <coughs> the proposal to the planning board, and then this is another thing that comes up, we don't want to have to send you back here. You know, I'd rather have you deal with everything at once. And sure. So what we can do tonight is we can continue the application we have until the 20th or 19th mm -hmm. of March. And in between, you should be coming back and probably refiling to a application that will include a special permit and, and or a variance, whatever is deemed necessary, so that everything will get covered. And that'll take another uh, certified mails and, and all that stuff. But that will make sure that everything gets perfected so somebody doesn't file okay. a, an appeal later because of something being missing. All right, we will okay. uh, we'll ask him and modify it. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Decker, do you want to make a motion for the, 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 the
Yeah. We're going to continue the hearing okay. to the 19th. I'll, I'll move. The, I'll move that we continue this hearing to the 19th for other a day, agreeable day. Second. Second. Okay. And just the only comment was possible uh, six o'clock start. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can get these folks in and out before then. Right. <laughs> and we need to vote on this, Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm just writing this down so I get this into the office there. Okay. You got anything else other than the minutes tonight to do? Okay. Uh, yep. All in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So why don't we read these minutes and take them off the next time? Because they're long and deep. There's a lot. But I will tell you, I read them when I was uh, recused yeah. and out. Great job. Yeah, Amazing good. job. I would like to give you a great mm -hmm. thanks. That's that is a wonderful thanks. job. On yeah, great job. Thanks. So. They're not too long. Well, if you're satisfied with you sure? the right job, I yeah. don't understand. Yeah, no, I read them. I read them. I'm satisfied. Right. Right. I'm ready to uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I second. Second. Can All in favor? Aye. Uh, can, can, can I pose? say something yeah, before? Yeah, hang on. He's yeah, got there's, some comment. Um, there's just a few things that I want to... Um, like I want to remove some of the red and um, there's a few like the assessor's map location that I put in here I just want to fill those in um, okay you want to just hold off on the vote until our next if that's we should yeah, if that's okay if, you, if, 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 that's if okay. you want to make that job an even better job yeah sure all the power to you. thank you thank sir. you thank you uh, I have a question does the board want to limit our time to 930 at night yeah, we want to put it sure. another time. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a problem going late, but I, I know other folks. Well, some of us are retired. <laughs> some of us have to work in the morning. Well, the question that's is, your problem. You should have gone to work for the state. You could have retired at fifty-five, <laughs> like me. He's still trying. <laughs> the question was that that the group from the Family Dollar, Dollar General, they have to travel to Worcester, and he was concerned getting back and being late. So, I, I think we could accommodate people's schedules. Be nice to. We could do it during the day too. No. Nope. Not do yeah, let's. Just, yeah. <laughs> you want to pay my early rate while we're, we're doing this? We can do it during the day. I think it could be chairman's discretion, but I would say so try to keep it to 9:30. Okay. You know, if there's one or two people that want to talk, still, so I get it. You know, we'll, <clears> if we got, if it's something that we're going to try to wrap up, yeah. regardless of who the who it is, and we can wrap it up in 15 minutes, I'm fine with that. But I would say that you know, two and a half hours for a meeting should be. If it if it looks like it's gonna it needs to go on another to another day, I think it's nine thirty. If we can finish it up and say, okay, we got ten more minutes. Yeah, let's get it done. Okay, and uh, let's shoot for the let's, you know, nine thirty. We'll take a break at like eight thirty something for ten minutes. Remember, we have to go over a little room. Okay, that's what happened to me. Well, that's mm -hmm. what happens to me all the time. <laughs> we can't get over. I'd like to thank everybody for the help tonight. This is I don't drink much anymore, John. <laughs> This is complicated. If I've had five years You're doing a good job. Then I think, you know, I thank your help because it's, it's complicated. Oh, it is. And we, you know, the, I think the beauty part of this is everybody has a piece of the pie, and I think but that's you know, really important. I was on the planning board when that building was built, and Dick was too. We're back in that vintage, and I know that that the. You know, we shouldn't talk result. about this since we've closed this yeah, hearing. We haven't closed the hearing. No. We've continued. Continue. <laughs> that, but we really should yeah. not uh, right. be discussing right. it when uh, right. when these folks have left. It's yeah. not the right All right. Way. I have a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn.